Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about the new movie, Transformers, Rise of the Beasts. Rise of the Beasts is directed by Stephen Capel Jr., whose most notable film is Creed II. I can't remember the last time I was excited for a Transformers movie, but my friend invited me to go check this one out. The synopsis is as follows. Optimus Prime and the Autobots take on their biggest challenge yet. When a new threat capable of destroying the entire planet emerges, they must team up with a powerful fact... They must team up with a powerful faction of Transformers known as the Maximals to save Earth. So without further ado, let's get into the six things that make a movie great. One, the plot. The plot of this movie is extremely simple. First and foremost, this movie takes place in between Bumblebee with Haley Steinfeld and Transformers 1 with Shia LaBeouf. And this movie opens with the Maximals barely escaping with their lives from an enforcer named Scourge. Scourge is the henchman of a being named Unicron, who basically is this gigantic transformer that feeds on planets. Unicron can only be summoned using this key that the Maximals now possess. They decide to find refuge on Earth. Time then flashes forward and we're introduced to the character of Noah Diaz and Elena Wallace, who end up getting mixed up with the Transformers in different ways and have to work together with the Transformers to keep this key hidden and out of the hands of Scourge and Unicron. For me, I guess there's nothing really wrong with the plot of this movie. It just feels like it's been really recycled. In the first Transformers movie, it was Sam Witwicky with Optimus Prime trying to find the AllSpark. In this movie, it's Noah Diaz and Optimus Prime and Mirage trying to keep this key away from Unicron. It just feels like the same thing, only worse. And a couple things that happen at the end of this movie are stolen right out of the playbook of Avengers Endgame, to the point where it's so obnoxiously obvious that I don't know how they got away with it. So in the end, the simplicity of the plot's not the problem, it's just the delivery and that we've seen the same thing in the same franchise before, so it's not very entertaining. They did add a twist at the end of this movie that has to do with potentially combining with a different franchise, and honestly, I can't say that I'm that excited for it because I just want these franchises separately to do a better job. And if you just combine two bad franchises together, it might just be one big incoherent mess, but I guess we'll have to see. So for me, plot gets a 50-50. Two is family friendliness. Rise of the Beasts is rated PG-13, and it's full of action, violence, minimal profanity, and a handful of sensual sexual jokes. I'd say use your discretion, but for me, family friendliness gets a 50-50. Three is acting and script. Here we go. The voice acting in this movie is awesome. You have Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime, Pete Davidson as Mirage, Peter Dinklage as Scourge, Michelle Yu as Airazor, and my boy Danny Rojas as Wheeljack. So the voice acting is not the problem. The Transformers have never been the problem. The problem with this movie and other Transformers movies is the actual actors. Anthony Ramos is okay slash tolerable. But Dominic Fishback, oh my gosh. Not only was her acting performance abysmal, but the lines that she was given as well were worthless. They were stupid. And that honestly goes for the whole script of this movie in general. And I guess that's the part that doesn't make sense to me is, one, why did you not bring back Haley Steinfeld? This movie takes place less than 10 years after Bumblebee, so she easily could have been part of this film. Don't know why she wasn't. But the script of this movie was absolutely terrible and the front-facing actors were miserable to watch. So for me, acting and script get a huge thumbs down. Four is character development. No one in this movie is developed. And one of the most frustrating things is that with the character of Noah Diaz, they give like maybe 10 minutes trying to give him some character development at the beginning. They talk about his military background. They talk about how he's a whiz with electronics. And then none of that is ever talked about or included in any part of the rest of the movie. He literally is just this characterless body that gets to travel with the Transformers because he basically said that they didn't have a choice even though at first he didn't want any part of it. And that goes for Elena as well. On top of an absolutely terrible acting performance, she has no character development whatsoever. And her only pertinence to this film in general is that she seems to know a lot about archaeology. It really just seemed like they were forcing the humans to be a part of this movie because they have to be, but there wasn't really a solid reason for them to be. 
To the point where almost the whole movie, I was wishing that they would make a movie that just had Transformers in it and didn't deal with humans because the character development was that bad. They don't really spend a super long time trying to develop Noah and his little brother either. They just included enough for there to be a couple little callbacks, but they didn't do anything. They didn't even try in this area of the film, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Character development gets a huge thumbs down. Five is visuals and CGI. Probably the only redeemable part of this movie is that the action sequences were entertaining. And because monkey is monkey. Watching gigantic Transformers fight each other in different ways and transform from their vehicle or animal forms into their max forms or Transformer forms will always be entertaining to me. It's because I have monkey brain and I can't help it. So I have no qualm whatsoever with what we did get. But that being said, it just seemed like the action sequences in this movie were not very long. But that may have also been me wanting more of the only thing that was working in this movie and not getting it. But for all intents and purposes, visuals and CGI get a thumbs up. And six is rewatchability. Transformers Rise of the Beasts is two hours and 16 minutes long and because of pretty much every area in this movie really struggling to go anywhere it kind of just drudged on quite a bit and it just makes you want to stick to watching the Transformer movies that are actually good like the OG one and Bumblebee. So for me rewatchability gets a thumbs down. With all these areas considered I have to give Transformers Rise of the Beasts a four out of ten. The only redeemable part about this movie was the action series sequences that involved a ton of CGI and big Transformers and Monkey beating the crap out of each other. The rest of this movie was filled with bad acting performances, an absolutely terrible script, no character development whatsoever, and a plot that was simple but recycled within its own franchise. So with that being said, even if you're a fan of the Transformers movies, I don't think that Rise of the Beasts is worth watching in theaters. Thank you so much for watching. If you've seen Transformers Rise of the Beasts, please let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. As always, I appreciate your love and support, and I'll catch you guys and gals in the next one.